All right, today, guys, what we're going to be taking a look at is this uh, new tool I picked up, this Autel TS201, which is more than a TMS or TPMS sensor activator. It can also tell you information about the sensor. And, and what I'm primarily interested in is that this, this tool says that it can tell you the battery health of the sensor. And that's one of the things I'd like to be able to tell is when I've got a sensor that's new and maybe the batteries aren't that good and they've gone bad sitting on the shelf or something of that nature. So let's go ahead and open this guy up and, and get him set up to take his paces and we'll see how he works. So should be able just to pop the top part off. What I'm trying to do here is not cut into the manual, which I think is sitting right behind the cardboard uh, piece here inside the plastic. And this way we can get the guy out. And hopefully we can get the monitor, the manual out there as well, which is right inside there. Great. And then also they give you a cable to connect to the PC. And so one of the other things I'll show you before we try it out is how you would go about uh, updating the firmware on this guy by hooking up to a PC. All right, so get this stuff out of the way here. So he's pretty small, you can see that. Um, nice normal size of what you would see on one that would be used to do TPMS learn activation. But what we're hoping to be able to is get a lot more out of this guy. So it looks like this um, has a little cover that pops off and this guy plugs in right on the bottom. And then we'll be able to hook him up to the PC. So let's shift over and do that. Let's first take a look at this quick start guide they give you. I just want to see if they uh, happen to mention anything about batteries or charging. I don't see anything right off the bat. So we should be good to go. All right, so let's break for a second. I'm going to pull this laptop over here, get started, and show you how you go about updating the firmware. All right, I got my laptop set up here, and uh, you know, the first thing we're going to do, it talks about going to the maxitpms.com website so that you can download the software that's used to update it. I'm going to go ahead and plug it into the laptop's USB jack so that it can start charging. So once you plug it in, it boots it up. You see it's got a nice color LCD screen. In fact, we'll just go ahead and take that protective piece off. And you can see down here at the bottom, it's charging up the internal battery that's built into the tool. So when you go to this website, and I'll go to this right now, maxitpms.com. What you want to do is you want to go to the support dropdown and you want to pick registration and update. And when you do that, you'll notice that this TS-201 is not on here. The TS-101 is not on here either. These are, these are tools you can still get, but they're, they're a couple of years old. So for whatever reason, I'll tell it doesn't keep them on here. But if you go to the 408, the 508, or the 501, the 601, either of these two tool families, but not the 401, uh, you can find the same software, the Maxi PC Suite, and you can go ahead and download this to your laptop. And if you do that, which I've already done ahead of time during the break we had, uh, you'll end up getting two packages installed. There will be a package for Windows to install on a Windows laptop, and then there will be a package for Mac OS to install on a MacBook. So that's pretty good. They give you, you know, both major platforms. So once that is installed, uh, you can go ahead and launch that application, Maxi PC Suite, which I'll do right here, and we'll give it the OK. It'll go look for this guy, it'll find it, and this is what we want to do. We want to do a firmware update. So we're going to say update the device. And the reason we want to do the firmware update is we want to make sure that we've got all the latest sensor information on the tool so that it can support as many vehicles as possible. So let's see how fast this goes and whether or not I want to have you guys sit through it. Um, it looks like it's going to be pretty slow at the rate it's going. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll break the video and we'll come back when it's near the end. All right, guys, uh, we're almost near the, the end there. And uh, as soon as this gets done, we should be all set with the latest firmware for this device. Okay, great. So now um, it's going to actually do an upgrade of the tool software first, it looks like. And uh, since I'm just doing this at the time we're making the video, this is what you guys would probably see as well. So it looks like when you download it, 
it's also going to upgrade it the first time you try to upgrade the tool. So this looks like it might not take too long. I'm just kind of watch this and see if it looks like it's going to be a while and whether or not we want to come back or not. Let's go ahead and install stuff from this guy. We're okay with that. We're okay with any of these drivers that it's trying to install here. This looks like it might take a while, so uh, I'm going to pause this and we'll come back when it finishes its gyrations on doing the update to the, P the Maxi PC suite software. All right, folks, quick read of the uh, quick start manual says that we've got to put the tool into an update mode before the Maxi suite can see it. So I'm going to scroll down to option three, which is my tool, and then I'm going to select update. And that's going to put this guy in update mode. And now I'm going to come over here and I'm going to run the software, clear the security check, and now it's going to hopefully see it okay, which it does. One of the steps you'll have on here is if, if you haven't already done it, <clears throat> it'll ask you to um, register the device and give it your email and stuff like that. All right, so we're going to go ahead and update this particular unit to the latest firmware which looks like version 1.02. And it looks like a four, roughly four and a half megabyte firmware image. I'm just trying to see, gauge how far this is going, whether or not I want to have you guys sit through this or not. Yeah, it looks like it's going a pretty good clip, so we'll wait through it. So after this completes, we're ready to use it and we're ready to put it into action. So I'm going to show you a few examples of using this tool to interrogate uh, various TPMS sensors and get information off of them. So we're we're done downloading it. Now we're installing the firmware update onto the tool itself. And I don't know how long this will take again because I just got this. So I'll wait a little bit here. See if it's a long time or a short time. There's right. There's not any um, obvious indication as to how long this is going to take. This looks like it's just going to say I've got one update to do and it's probably not going to go all the way over until it's fully done. And there's really nothing here telling me how long it's going to take to install that update. All right, so finally we see some information on the device itself. It's coming up here and saying update aught, which I guess is probably it's trying to say update the autel. So at least they're communicating and they're doing their thing. But since I don't know how long this is going to be, I'm going to go ahead and pause it here. Uh, well, well, hold on. I see it now. It's up here, just like the download. So, yeah, this is um, it's going at a pretty good clip. But I think what we'll do is we'll pause it and come back when it gets near the end. All right, we're almost near the end here of completing the firmware update. Just a couple of more seconds and there it is so updating the hotel ended on the device the update has ended over here so we don't have any use of this pc maxi suite software anymore so we can go ahead and close this and so at this point i'm hoping that we can uh exit out of this guy but it might be that um he wants to do a reboot oh, there he goes just like i suspected so we will wait for it to uh either power back on itself or maybe I have to power it back on. Nope, it does it by itself. All right, so we're back in there. So we're still charging the battery. It's now not full, but I can show you some of the features now. So when we went into that My Tool feature, we had the uh, option of doing a firmware update, but then there's some settings with the device, which is basically setting the language information and, and, and whether you're going to be using um, English or, or metric information on what's being measured. And then if I go back here to the tool main, the two main settings, when I'm looking at interacting with the sensor, I can either scan by vehicle where I have to go down here and manually pick the brand of the vehicle. And then if I so let's pick Chevrolet here, then it's running, as I suspect it's gonna make me walk through and, and pick a particular brand. The other option that it has on the top menu is auto scan, where it'll try to figure out just by talking with the sensor uh, which one it is and which brand it is. So let's walk over to a vehicle and see the tool in action. I got the Chevrolet Cruze in learn mode now. I'm going to go and scan by vehicle, Chevrolet Cruze. And this is a 2012. So I'm going to pick 2012. And I had already given this guy uh, a shot, so we're going to go ahead and clear it. And all you got to do, you come up to where the valve stem is on the sensor, and you're going to press OK one time, and you're going to wait for it to transmit. 
So we're going to go around the vehicle and do that, and we'll come back when we get to the last tire. All right, guys, I'm on this last tire. I've actually done this one time already just to get the feeling for how the tool works. I'm going to go ahead and press the OK button here on this last one. Okay, the vehicle's done. Now they're all done. They're all checked. It gives you some information uh, about the health and all that. But what I'm going to do now is it says here, if you hold the OK button, you get information about them. So I'm going to hold it down. And now I get what we're really after. Uh, for each position, like left front, we can get the, uh, the pressures, uh, you know, in, in, instead of PSI, I haven't changed the settings. So we're getting metric for KPA and, and Celsius but we're also getting battery information. So we know the battery's okay on the left front, right front, right rear, and left rear. So this gives you a lot more information than say the GM tool, which is what you would normally use to activate the sensors, but all it does is activate the sensors so that you can relearn the position after you rotate the tires. This Maxi TPMS from Autel, this TS201, will give you information about the battery health as well as what the pressure that the, the uh, sensor is reading. So it's a lot more information on that. So let's take it back to the bench and look at a couple other things it can do. All right, let me show you a couple other things, guys. So one of the things I, I, I did uh, as we walked away from the vehicle, I went into the My Tool and I went into Settings and I went ahead and I changed our pressure unit to PSI, our temperature unit to Fahrenheit, and let's get rid of this annoying beep too. We can turn that off. So now we don't hear that every time we press a button. So now if I come back and look at scan by vehicle, and if I pick the same vehicle I had before, it'll save me, it'll show me that I have the data stored. And what I'm gonna say is no, I don't want to erase it. And now if I hold the OK button down, I'll get the information in PSI and Fahrenheit. So just to, you know, a couple of settings that you can do is very nice to have. All right, so if you go back to the main menu, besides being able to scan by vehicle and picking the type, you can also auto scan. And if you go into auto scan, it has a ser several different ways to activate the sensor. So there's a low frequency scan, which is what we would do on something like that cruise. There's a deflation scan, which is what you use on early TPMS sensors where you just let the air out of the tire in order to activate it. There's a magnet scan. Some brands of vehicles, you have to put a little magnet on top of the valve stem in order to initiate the, the learn mode uh, response. And then there's a, a set of Chinese vehicle settings that uh, we won't even get into because I guess they have something unique that they do over there. But these are the three primary ones and this low frequency scan is typically what you do on General Motors vehicles, which is what I'm mostly working with. If you go into this one, you're gonna have to know the, the frequency of the particular TPMS sensor. So you see like it talks about a 315 uh, megahertz, a 433 megahertz. These first two SCH are from Schrader. These are manufacturers, so you got different manufacturers at uh, different frequency ranges. So this is, you know, a little bit more in a, uh, a DIY tool. You know, this is a, a, a kind of an entry-level shop tool, but it's if you have a number of vehicles and you're doing this often, I think it's a pretty good deal. I picked this up for just around fifty dollars, uh, so uh, a you know a little bit more than just a standard activation tool. But in my opinion, just being able to tell the battery health is uh, worth its weight in gold so that you know if you've got one of these sensors it's about to go. Anyway, I hope this uh, kind of review helps you out. We're still charging this guy off and on. Uh, we did this whole video in about, you know, 10 minutes or so off and on between backing the vehicle out and getting it in learn mode and that sort of thing. I'm very happy with this guy. So it's obviously got a built-in um, rechargeable battery inside the housing. That's uh, kind of a concern because of how you might replace it. I haven't necessarily wanted to open this up until the warranty is over to see what's involved there. Um, made in Vietnam, so don't see that too often. So I hope this uh, helps you out. If you got some questions about this, I'll try to help you out. You know, like I can maybe check it up in the owner's manual if you're trying to do like a, a pre-purchase kind of question. Or if you got one of these and you got some things you want to add, feel free to drop them in the comments. I hope you found this useful. If you did, hit that like button and please subscribe. More content coming your way just like this. Thanks for watching.